Welcome everybody. Now, this is going to be part of the Build-A-Bot series. Like a Build-A-Bear, but Build-A-Bot, you know what I mean? Kind of just takes you right on through it. Really simple, really easy. Anybody can do it. Cool. Alright, so, Disparity Index, the Demand Index, and the Detrended Price Oscillator with a VWAP setting. Now we can come in here and give that in a little adjustment there and maybe not make it a VWAP we can make it um, you know open interest or implied volatility okay see how that changes there excellent all right but um, you know I don't uh, personally like that you know even though it does show you uh, many different things and we can use this implied volatility scan uh, in another way on another setting so let's go back here and maybe uh, Go from implied volatility. We could also go tick count. Okay. Uh oh. Maybe we cannot do that. Okay. All right. Now that's setting our high and our low. All right. At certain levels. All right. Now we can use these certain levels uh, to scan for things. Okay. But yeah, you know, we do volume or the VWAP, high, low, close. Uh, Anyway, but this VWAP setting here seems to work really, really well. All right. But we're going to use those uh, particular levels and formulas to build other strategies here. So starting with this uh, detrended price oscillator, come right over in your little hourglass and pull those up in your studies, okay? So go with demand, and get your demand index pulled up, okay, and get your detrended price oscillator and your disparity index, all right, pull those all up, and I found them just rolling through the list here, and, you know, I just kind of plucked them out of this area here, all right, you can also get your deviation scaled moving average, or deviation scaled, uh, looks like oscillator. All right, but let's not uh, play with too many things here all at one time. All right. Because what we really want to scan for is this to break above zero. So in your scan tab, all right, get rid of all that extra stuff. Let's make a close price of, let's say, a dollar, and I like 50 cents or 25 cents, just because uh, they, they have to maintain that to stay on the NASDAQ, you know, above a dollar. Okay, and you can do your percent change, you know, from a negative uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to a maximum. So this really isn't going to be, you know, the most helpful one to hone in on. But at least if it's going from nothing to positive, or, you know, let's just say, you know, a negative 5. Then now we get to see when it's, uh, you know, maybe starting to recover. Okay. And we get a market maker move. All right, I like to say at least 0.5, you know, to the max there. That, that hones it down a good bit. All right. Now we can add a study filter. All right. Hit your little pencil, and we're going to stay on the daily. All right. And you can either edit here, or you can just delete and add another condition. So delete, add another condition, study, and we'll go for the detrended price oscillator. So we want to know when the DPO, okay, now it's going to be crosses above or below or is greater than, okay, so that, I mean, that's going to be our, you know, way of uh, finding it. All right, so we want to know when it's uh, greater than, all right, and that's going to be, you know, uh, the, we can go back and refer, you know, to the DPO zero line, okay? Or we can just give it a value 
and it should pick up the value of 0. So we can also do that, and it should make the code a little cleaner, too. But if it doesn't work, we can also just go back and refer it to the 0 line. and hit scan. Now we're hitting scan and we're creating this watch list, okay? Which is also our trigger. So our watch lists are our triggers. So if it's on our watch list, that means it's a valid trigger, okay? So very interesting. We are showing 1,286 results. So that could be a good thing, all right? That is, that, 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 that is a good thing, all right? But maybe we still need to hone it down even more. All right, so we can make this negative 15%, okay, and see if that gives us more or less results. Okay, eh, a couple more, but not really very many, only 12 more. So the difference between 5 and 15% over a large, you know, the, the thousand stocks was only, you know, less than 10, you know, 9, 10 stocks. Okay. All right, so let's hone that down even a little more. Now, let's look at our chart and see maybe what we can do for that, because right now we're asking it this condition when it crosses. So let's just make sure that's the condition that we're asking it for. All right, so in our scan tab, hit your little pencil next to the daily, and we want the ThinkScript editor. So condition wizard, click over to the editor, and copy this piece of code. All right, we're going to start to build our triggers. All right, copy that, cancel. All right, come over to your chart, hit your hourglass. All right, now in your studies here, we're going to make sure this all lines up good. So we're going to create a new study. All right, and right where it says close, just paste that little piece of code that you just ripped out of there. All right, and make sure you close it out. If it shows up red, okay, if it looks like this, you need to close it out with a colon. All right, so close it out with your colon semicolon. All right, now you're good to click OK. Now our new study here popped up up top because I never remember to declare them lower. And close that out with a semicolon. All right, now hit apply, hit OK. Now it's lower. Let's see what happened. What did we get? All right, well, we did get a good piece of information. I like it and it caught it when it was greater than, okay? Now, we know the entire time it's greater than. So while this signal is true and valid and bullish, we know about it, all right? And when it took a dip, we knew about it, all right? Um, and that's on the daily. Now, this will work. It should work all the way out to the weekly as well, but it was formed on a daily signal. So as you can see, it catches it on the daily, but if we wanted it on the weekly to catch it back here, we would have to go and make that weekly scan. All right, so we would have to make that watch list for each one, but this indicator was designed on a daily. So truly, we would want to make it if we, you know, to work on every time frame, we would have to go and make it on the weekly first, I believe. So, you know, that would be the true form would be to take this all the way out to the monthly and weekly first, and then once you've made your scans down to the daily, um, but. Uh, since I don't go that far out to the week, you know, most of the time, a daily scan is just fine for a daily and everything below it. And you can see a daily scan's even good on the weekly, too. It's just a little behind. It was one doji, but that does doji matter. So we can go out, click that weekly, and hit scan. Now we got 1,501 results. All right, so how can we even tone that down, you know, uh, Let's see. Now we can use the demand index. All right. So when our demand index is also above zero. All right. So we'll throw our demand index scanned in there too. And we could also use our disparity index as a third filter. Okay. And we will do that. Okay. So we're out here on the weekly, and we're going to click our pencil, but we're going to add another condition. All right. Now we're going to go to study. All right. That's going to be the demand index. 
all right, our demand index. And it's got a length of five there, so that's the demand index, okay, is greater than, and we're gonna go, well, you know, we don't need to use the study and refer it back to it. We can just take our value and define it here as a zero. Click save, hit okay, and let's hit scan and see what pops up now. If we have to separate the conditions, we will. Okay. 1292. So it gives you a, a very large list. Okay. And of course, some of the red ones are, you know, ones that are pulling back or possible in their dip. Okay. Let's bring this down to the daily. And see, changing that should change them both. 11.52. Okay. Let's add another stock filter. And we can do a beta, we can do EPS, we can do a sizzle, PE. Let's see. A sizzle index. Let's do a sizzle index of uh, 0.8. Point eight to the max. Five hundred sixty-three. All right. So that really starts to bring them down. Let's do a sizzle index of one. It means we've got uh, options and uh, market makers, you know, taking part. So we've got a market maker move of point five and a sizzle index of at least one. Um, and 452. So now we're really honing it down. All right. And let's just see here. Now also on the weekly or the daily time chart, we're looking at, of course, this is just UDR. We can pull up, uh, let's pull up AAPL and pull up our apples. Okay, see we get a good signal here, a good signal here, and a good signal here. Thrice confirmed. Okay, so when we get our good signals thrice confirmed on the daily, all right, uh, that means good things, all right? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, and we can probably smooth this out. Uh, I mean, they do act very similar, but this disparity index as well we can use as our third filter. So, come back in here to your pencil, and if you want, you can add a total... Uh, you know, an, an extra, uh, you know, study and, and make it be another thing. Um, and, uh, you know, say make the disparity index on a smaller time frame. Okay. Um, say like a one hour, 15 minute time frame. Okay. Or you can just, you know, add it in as another daily. Hit delete. All right, hit your study. And do your disparity index. We're going with is greater than, okay. And then we're gonna go with just our value. And once again, that's just zero. Within one bars. Okay, so we can split up our conditions or we can keep them together. Didn't really uh, do very much. Okay, so these two are, you know, they, they seem to be very similar, but this detrended price oscillator, we can put it on many different types of adjustments. Okay, now how else can we you know, separate some of this information, you know, when it crosses zero, I mean, that was great. Look at this disparity index. It caught that, and then boom, price exploded. Um, I mean, had, had someone been using this particular system, this indicator, they, they, they would have gotten it. That, that was a great move. OK. 
Okay. Then we get to some chop in here. You know, it gets a little unrecognizable, but still, the above zero moves are worth it. And then short. Okay. So, you know, these above zero moves, these dips, you know, you're finding and buying these dips here. All right. Perfect. Yeah, you know, these are giving you, you know, very clear signals on the daily, weekly. And I mean, let's just check that four hour time chart, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's accurate. Okay, maybe we don't want to load the four hour time chart. Load that four hour time chart. That one. Okay, whatever. No four hour time chart. But for the daily and swing trading, this works. Okay. So that is an accurate trigger. So what do we consider the exit trigger? Because we still need one. Okay. Um, you know, the, this got us into trouble. How do we get out of it? Four hour. 15 minute. I mean, maybe it's, it just doesn't want to show the lower charts right now. Must have some update going. Oh well. Anyhow, see that we're dojing out right now and that we're possible, you know, still on a decline. Um, I mean, it, uh, we need to have some sort of scale as an you know, exit. This goes, you know, uh, by, by, by 10, 20, negative 10. Okay, and this goes by 0 0.5. Okay, not 10 and 20 and so on. And this goes by positive 200, negative 200. Uh, the detrended price oscillator. Okay, so we have to decide, you know, the full scale of it, um, and what's going to be a good exit point, um, and how to define it. All right, so we're going to need to know when, you know, this DPO or whatever, you know, say crosses below 200. Um, you know, that would be our exit, or the DPO is less than, you know, 0 0.8, or the DPO is less than you know, at uh, 20 or negative 20 or positive 20 or something like that. So we're going to have to do a little, a little work in here. Possibly, let's just involve another separate indicator altogether to build the exit. So maybe we'll use a moving average to build that exit. Um, you know, use a moving average signal. So that's, that's totally possible here as well.